Well, good morning. Welcome to Worship in Jesus' Name at Cross Lutheran Church. We're glad you're here as this morning we are reminded of our own baptisms in hearing and celebrating the baptism of our Lord. A special welcome if you're visiting with us this morning. I encourage you to fill out either a welcome envelope or sign the guest register that's in the narthex. Uh, Please hold the family and friends of Richard Agnew, a longtime member of Cross Lutheran Church, in your thoughts and prayers who died this past week. Services are pending for him. And an update on Ellie Wisman's memorial service that will be held uh, Friday, September 21st, here at Cross Lutheran at 11 o'clock. Yes? February. February. What did I say? Oh. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling a little off today with a cold, so um, just keep raising your hand if it doesn't make sense to you. Okay, thank you. And um, those details will follow about the visitation and the luncheon and all of that that will be a part of her memorial service. A youth overnight will be held this coming Friday and Saturday. uh, I have July, see? January 17th and 18th. If you've not signed up and would like to go, uh, contact Katie Erickson or call the church office. A reminder about the congregational meeting Sunday, January 26th, following worship. Plan on attending. There's always opportunity at those to learn about things and to ask questions. Our programming for Sunday School Education resumes today, January 12th. Check the insert in your bulletin for what's happening in the upcoming weeks. And now Emily has a couple of announcements. Good morning. Um, Now that we've all warmed up our voices this morning, I would like to remind everyone that next Sunday, January 19th, is Come As You Are Choir. So uh, if you would love to join Voices in the morning, we meet at 845 and rehearse a simple anthem. Um, And also a reminder that choir practice begins January 22nd, and we meet at 715 And I would encourage you, we have a small and mighty choir who does a wonderful job, but it is so much fun to sing when there are more voices joining together. So I would encourage you, if you have ever thought about it or would like to show your support for music in our worship, to join us either um, Sunday morning for Come As You Are Choir or at rehearsals on Wednesday night at 7.15. And one other thing Uh, In our bulletins today, we have a couple incorrect hymn numbers during communion. Um, So uh, if you look on your second page, Wade in the Water is actually number 35, and Mother and God, You Gave Me Birth is number 19. They are correct on all the boards. So if you need help remembering, just look up there. But just so you know, they they are different. So thank you. Thank you, Emily. Now we'll spend a moment or two preparing our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness found in your binders today on page one. In one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We confess our sins as broken people, looking to Christ to mend us and make us whole.
How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? How long will it take me to answer the people in my life that call for help or cry out to you suffering, but you do not save? When will I stop turning away from the violence I see in the world? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Is it you or I, Lord, who tolerate such things? Destruction and violence are before us. There is strife and conflict abounds. How are we called to respond? Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. Is this because God's world is waiting for us? The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. How will we respond to our world's needs and God's own call to us? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are called children of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, and our Lord promises always to be with us. As promised, the Holy Spirit leads us into new life in God's world. Led by your grace, help us to follow. We sing our opening hymn this morning, uh, Come All You People. Number 60. Open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body.
prayed together the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Please pray with me. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons and empower us all with your spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and I invite you to be seated as well. As, um, I invite the children just to come on up here and sit down. Have any of
Today is the first Sunday after Epiphany. Today we focus our attention on Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist at the River Jordan. At Jesus' baptism, God reveals that this is his son, and with his son, God is very pleased. In our baptisms, God has also declared that we are his children and that he wants us to follow Jesus. The color of Epiphany is white. White is the color for God's glory and the light of his truth. The first reading for this Sunday, the baptism of our Lord, comes from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. This can be found in the Pew Bible in the Old Testament on page 670. A reading from Isaiah. Here is my servant whom whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, and the prison from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See the former things that have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here is the first lesson. The second lesson for this Sunday comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. This can be found in your pew Bible in the New Testament on page 129. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to who, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. I invite you to turn in your New Testament, part of your Bible, to page 3, as we read together from the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. 
Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, it was two families, one page immediately following the other, going on in the ICU unit one night as I was on call as an intern chaplain. There were two grandfathers who were dying right across the hall from one another, and the families could not have been more different had they been written up in one of those Lifetime or Hallmark kind of movie. Because one, on the one side of the hallway, was right out of a Norman Rockwell painting. It was the perfect family, it seemed. The matriarch was at his side. The patriarch of this family now with all those wires and all those tubes being pulled off, all the machines had been shut off. His children and his grandchildren were present in the room to say goodbye to him for the very last time. On the other side of that hallway was that other grandfather. He was this tattooed and crusty kind of guy who from the conversation that I had had with his wife had lived a very hard life and was just dying way too young. I remember that there were tattoos up and down his arms, there were tattoos on his chest, as well as the letters M and A on his index and middle finger. What's that mean? What's oh, Massachusetts? What's that mean? I asked his wife. Well, his wife said to me his first wife's name was Mary. And he was going to take the name off of his fingers, but he only got to R and Y as he discovered it was just way too painful. So those two letters remained. And I remember thinking at the time, well, I wondered if then he called his second wife Ma. She wanted him baptized. That's why she had called a chaplain. She was sure that he would want that too. And as he was unconscious and couldn't speak for himself, I hesitated a bit. And I said, do you think that he would want to be baptized if he could speak for himself? And she said, yes, right away. Yes, I believe he would. Yes, yes, she said. I know he would want to be baptized. Well, the man's grandson was in the corner of the room. He was squatted down, nearly sitting on his uh, rear end, and he had a do-rag on his head. I'll never forget that. And he had his head in his hands, and he wasn't saying anything at all this whole time. And so I said to the wife, I said, you know, let me think about that. Let me think about this. And looking back, I know I was stalling because I was unsure of what to do, but I knew that I had to do something soon because this husband and this grandfather was dying. Well, we heard in our gospel story today that John the Baptist also hesitates. He hesitates when Jesus comes to be baptized by him, but Jesus says to him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness meaning justification, God setting right the things that are wrong through Jesus Christ, where all will now be made equal in God's eyes through Christ's saving work on the cross. For grandfathers who seem as though they've lived a very good life, as well as those who have made a lot of mistakes along the way, and that includes you and me. 
And we know that John the Baptist was a prophet. He was a truth teller. He was even a relative of Jesus. Yet in this pivotal moment, he's also revealed as a conduit. He becomes the conduit, a vessel of God's redeeming grace, even though he hesitates to baptize Jesus at first. Because John the Baptist was called to participate with God and Jesus in this new kind of way, in the affirmation as well as the identity of who Jesus was and how Jesus would then begin his ministry, even though John the Baptist deemed himself unworthy to do this. But then he consents. He consents. Because John the Baptist was drawn into that same kind of relationship that we're drawn into when we are baptized in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And those same words that fell on John and Jesus' ears that day must be spoken then by God for us too. This is my son. This is my daughter, my beloved in whom I am well pleased. And their words that resonate from which they were first recorded, spoken through that prophet Isaiah that we heard thousands of years ago, where where Isaiah says, Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. Does that sound familiar? It ought to, because the servant that is referenced in Isaiah is thought to be Jesus. And so the good news for us this morning is that we've been chosen. We've been chosen too. That same spirit is upon us. We are God's beloved, called to be God's truth tellers and God's servants to speak the good news and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We're called to the ends of the earth to play a part then in carrying out Jesus' ministry today, even at those times where it makes us uncomfortable or we might meet resistance or there might be some kind of struggle for us in doing that, or when we hesitate because we're certain that God couldn't possibly be using us. But as God's beloved, we're called to be loved. We're called to be loved, to hear God's voice, and then to allow those words that God has spoken through the ages that God spoke in John and Jesus' presence that day, to let those words resonate with us and then to sink into our own hearts and our minds and our spirits and then to respond to that, to allow God then to work in and through us with the power of God's love. We're called. We're also called to be loved by God, to serve then in obedience and humility, to receive God's delight and to share it with others. We're called to be loving, even when it makes us uncomfortable or when we want to resist it, we are called still to be loving, even when it might be a struggle for us to do that. We're called to be open. We're called to open, in fact, the eyes of the blind, to bring out those prisoners from the dungeon, to bring light to all who sit in darkness. And so rather than demonizing, or rather than acts of hate, or hostility, or violence, or senseless warmongering, none of those have any kind of place in Jesus' ministry. We're called to acts of reconciliation, love of neighbor, and love of our enemy. We're called to healing and to peace. John the Baptist hesitates and then does as Jesus asks, 
participating then in the fulfillment of that prophecy so that we might receive our identity as children of God and as God's beloved, the one who is present with us at all times and in all places. We're children of God through our baptism and through our faith. And so through Jesus and with John's help that day, humanity was then brought into this mysteriously profound kind of experience of God's love and of God's delight. We and people everywhere then receive this same invitation. Whether you're from an ideal family, whether you're the ideal family man, or whether you've lived life the hard way, the invitation is the same for each and every one of us. God choosing. God choosing to love us all and to seek each and every one of us out to participate then in God's plan and God's purpose in the fulfillment of the kingdom, even on those days we hesitate or we simply want no part of it. You know, I hesitated. I hesitated in the ICU room that day to baptize a man that I was not sure wanted to receive it. But you know what? I did it anyway. I did it anyway because looking back, I know that God's spirit was also present in the room that day, working through me and working through his wife as we became those conduits and vessels of God's grace, both of us then participating on some level like John the Baptist in the gift of God's righteousness given to us all in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, realized through our own baptism. Even after, even after his grandson stood up and stepped out of that corner and walked towards us and then said to his mom, you know, Grandpa wouldn't want to be baptized, Grandma. Excuse me, it was his grandma. You shouldn't have let her do it. You shouldn't have let her baptize him. And why he waited to speak these words until after I had performed the baptism was somewhat of a mystery to me, but maybe not. Maybe it's not a mystery at all received through the context of today's gospel story. Because the truth of the matter is that God can do as God chooses with whomever God chooses. And in Jesus' baptism, we receive a glimpse of God's character, the one that we are in relationship with. And I choose, I choose to believe that God used that man's wife and me that day to help her husband realize then his own true identity, who he was, And whose he was, a child of God, God's beloved, God's beloved. And to know then in some way that he was and is still being loved by God that day and for all eternity as God's soul delight. You know, maybe that's why that grandson hesitated that day, because he felt unworthy. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think rather because he had sensed and he had felt God's love and delight in the room that day as well. That light, that love, that no darkness, not even death, can overcome. Amen.
I invite you to turn to page four as we sing what we believe. Hear the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of baptism. Give your church boldness to proclaim your promises. Tear down obstacles of injustice so your hope reaches the ends of the earth. We pray for bishops, pastors, deacons, and all other leaders, for teachers and missionaries, for the newly baptized and those preparing for baptism. We pray for coastlands and mountains, rivers and deserts, prairies and valleys, for wilderness and cities, lakes and oceans, for farmlands and pastures, forests and rangelands, and for orchards, vineyards and gardens. End the devastation of the fires to humanity and all other life in Australia and continue to sustain all those fighting the impact of its destruction. We pray for all people in all places, for those who work for peace, for those whose safety is threatened by warfare in Iraq, Iran, Syria, the Ukraine, South Sudan, and Nigeria. We pray for our military, our citizens, and for immigrants and refugees, particularly those still separated at our border and living in unacceptable detention centers. We 
pray for those who are hungry, for those who live with disabilities, for those who fear what the future holds for them. Break through clouds of pain and anguish with your voice of comfort and your voice of healing as we lift up those hurting aloud or in our hearts before you. Lance. We pray for this assembly, for committee members and all leaders, for those who help us learn from our past and who plan for the future, and for all whose faithful stewardship sustains this congregation's ministry. With thanksgiving, we pray for and remember all who have died this past year. Richard Agnew, Dave Larson, Ellie Wisman, Bruce Berggren, Leon Henriksen, Marlis Johnson, Claire Olson, Mike Long, Arlo Stack, Gloria Clausen, Nola Hovland, Harry Erickson, Dick Clausen, Dorothy Linroth, Donna Ruscher, and Roger Kiefer. And we pray for all those who have pointed us toward the light of Christ and the truth of your love through their own baptismal witness. Pondering the mystery of your love, we offer our prayers in the name of Christ, the word made flesh and the light no darkness can overcome. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, Shall We Gather at the River, number 25.